What's going on, guys? Welcome back to WWE Network and Chill, where I Graham G.S. and Matthews break down all the original content I watch on the WWE Network. And today we're talking the October 23rd, 2020 edition of Talking Smack. Now, yes, the show usually does air on Saturdays on the WWE Network, and it is up on the network now. But the show actually originally aired last night, which is why it's the October 23rd edition of Talking Smack. So, long story short, not really a long story, but... I guess after SmackDown, because SmackDown aired on FS1 last night because of the World Series airing and whatever, um, that SmackDown got bumped to FS1, which is exactly what happened last year, nothing new. So because of that, I guess they saw that as an opportunity to bring back Backstage, which we haven't had an episode of, a formal episode, a formal episode of, which I don't think anyway, since June. We haven't had the show since June. They canceled it around May, June, over the summer, whatever. Maybe July it was made official. Um, it had been a while since we got an episode of Backstage. So, since the show aired originally on FS1, I guess they saw that as an opportunity to bring the show back after SmackDown this week. Something happened, and I think either Thursday or early Friday they changed it from Backstage to an episode of Talking Smack. Now, Booker T was a guest host here on Talking Smack. So, they got Booker T, and the other... (laughs) I mean... I, I'm not really surprised, um, but you look at the other co-hosts that are usually on backstage. I mean, Christian is one person, but Christian recently got attacked on Raw, so maybe they don't want to bring in him. Other than Christian, though, you have Renee Young, who left WWE a couple of months ago, uh, legitimately. And yeah, she was on the SmackDown pre-show last week. I don't even think she was there in person. I think she was there over video form. You can't have her FaceTime in for a show like Talking Smack. So she was out of the picture. Or maybe she had something else going on, I don't know. But she was not going to be there in person. CM Punk, I don't think they were going to bring CM Punk into the Thunderdome. I think part of the gig that Punk liked about backstage was that he didn't have to be at WWE around the crew and the people like that. Which would have been amazing to see. But he was not going to be there. And then Paige, um, (laughs) I mean, I can only imagine... We haven't really heard anything on her front about, like, you know, her status with WWE. She's still doing the Twitch thing, which WWE, I don't know if they're happy about it. I have no clue. But that was a big point of contention, I believe, because that's where, you know, that's where a lot of her time is devoted to now, is Twitch. And WWE had that recent Twitch edict where, like, oh, you can't make money off of it without our permission or whatever. So that that's probably why Booker T has no ill will towards anyone in the company. I don't, I don't think he has any problems right now. So they brought him in for Talking Smack. And they just canceled backstage altogether. Now, the show did air on FS1 after SmackDown last night. It is available right now on the network, which is how I watched it this morning. It was an hour-long episode on the network without commercials. It's 44 minutes. I skipped over some shit. Like, they showed at one point uh, Roman Reigns and Big E discussing their ties to football. We saw Rob Stone's interview last week with Stone Cold Steve Austin over FaceTime. I watched some of that stuff. I just skipped over most of it. They had that Street Profits therapy thing, which I could have sworn I've seen before on Backstage. Um, Like the joke therapy segments they were doing on Backstage with the Fox people. You could just skip right over that shit. So I'm glad this is not a regular thing. Talking Smack does not need to be an hour-long show. Not even 45 minutes. They had four guests here on the show. Sasha Banks was the final guest. She was there for maybe two minutes. It was a complete waste. Um, Yeah, so I thought overall, though, it was a decent show. So hosting it, like I said, they had Booker T., Kayla Braxton was there as always. And Sami Zayn's been there the last couple of weeks, but they probably don't want to have him be a regular on the show. So instead they brought in, oddly enough, SmackDown Tag Team Champion, another champion, in Montez Ford. And he actually did pretty well. He didn't say a lot. It was mostly Booker and Braxton. But I thought Montez Ford did well. So they recap the ending to SmackDown. This is what I'm saying. Like, they show full recaps, full replays from SmackDown that just finished airing five minutes ago. And it's like, they don't do this stuff on the network usually because they don't need to. It's a 25-minute show. You get in, you get out, you get your shit in, and that, that's it. They don't need to do the recaps. They do on Raw Talk. They don't do that on Talking Smack normally, but they did here. So the first guest they had on was Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman does not think, despite what we saw on SmackDown on Friday, right before this aired, that Jay got in Roman Reigns' head with what he did with Jimmy. Um... Roman, I guess, according to Paul, doesn't, you know, he doesn't want to run through Jay. He wants a competitive match. He wants Jay to look good in defeat before beating him, which was a funny thing for Heyman to say. Um, When Booker brings up what makes a great Paul Heyman guy, Heyman says everything that he ever said about anyone from, you know, Rey Mysterio to Rob Van Dam to Brock Lesnar to CM Punk to Rick Rude and all these other guys, I believed in them. 
I believed in everything I ever said about those guys as Paul Heyman guys. But Roman Reigns, I'm more of a Roman Reigns guy than he is a Paul Heyman guy. And he told me that in our interview last week. You check out the audio here on the channel from last week. But that's what he said. He, he, he has said that multiple times by now. The first time he's probably said that on WWE TV, though. So he praises Booker T about how he was the biggest star WCW could have gotten, which isn't true. But he was the biggest star to defect from WCW over to WWE. Not really defect. I mean, the company closed down. That's how we kind of got in the doors. But as opposed to sitting home and collecting a paycheck, which everyone else did, Hogan, Nash, Hall, Goldberg, Sting, everyone else, Steiner, he went to WWE right away because he wanted to test himself against the best in the business, that being Stone Cold, Rock, and all these other guys. He admired that about Booker T. And he admires that about Roman Reigns as well. Montez Ford brings up the I quit stipulation, how demeaning it must be in order to say the words I quit as a WWE superstar. Uh, Booker T even brings up the little brother dynamic about how, like, Jay's not his little brother, but he's kind of like his little cousin. How he wants to kind of, you know, prove to Roman that he's not this sidekick, that he's on his level, if not better. Heyman says that Roman takes care of the family. He takes care of the family, and if he loses, it's going to be a fall from grace that you've never, ever seen before. And he'd be giving up on himself. And Kayla's like, all right, what are the exact consequences, though, for Roman if he loses? He just says he'll lose the championship, and the championship is his identity in the WWE. And if he loses the championship, he will no longer be the head of the table. Again, the whole head of the table stuff, it's cool storyline-wise, but if Roman loses, why should I care if he's the head of the table? It's not my family. I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Like, who cares? But the championship is really what's on the line here for Roman. It's not like he has to quit the company or leave SmackDown if he loses. He just loses the championship. So that means he's not losing. And Heyman says it's personal for Roman Reigns. So the next guest they bring on is Daniel Bryan. Unfortunately, Bryan was not as off the cuff as he was last week. And it was so funny, too, because Brian called Shorty G Chad Gable here on the show a week ago. And then on SmackDown this week, he went back to being Chad Gable. So I, I can credit Brian for that one. And I think, honestly, behind the scenes, Brian may have had something to do with that. I feel like he's a big Chad Gable guy. He's always been very, you know, praiseworthy of uh, Chad Gable. And he probably, behind the scenes, was saying, hey, can you give this guy his name back? Like, he shouldn't be a joke. And he probably wasn't the only one. But Brian's a big fan of the younger guys. Um, he likes the Street Profits, and when Montez says, oh, I can give you one of our plastic cups with your name on it, Brian, just with a great answer, goes, mm, I'll pass on that. I'm not a big plastic cup person. And Montez is like, oh, no, we'll clean it. And Brian's like, no, 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 I'm, I'm Mr. <laughs> I'm supposed to be the planet's champion. I should not be collecting plastic cups, which I thought was great. Um, Brian does praise Booker T's WCW TV title run as someone who regularly defended his championship. That was what got Booker T over. And that's what he wants from the Intercontinental Championship, which he said on SmackDown this week. And firstly, on Talking Smack a week ago, um, he wants that championship defended on a more regular basis on the blue brand. So he says, you know, Booker T brings up how Brian said last week that he feels like he's lost this step. And Brian admits to that again. And he says, at this point, my athletic ability was what kind of got me here. That's not really my strong suit anymore. My strong suit now is my mind and what I can do up here in my head. He wants to be a good ancestor, kind of a weird way of putting it, but he wants to give back now as opposed to like leaving and then giving back then or not giving back at all. He wants to give back while he's still here, while he's still active to the younger guys. And he sees these younger stars as being the people that can bring in that younger audience. And he actually outright admits he thinks that this is his last full-time run as a wrestler in WWE. And he didn't say in WWE, he just said in general. So it's not like, oh, it's my last run in WWE, time to go to AEW. Like, this is probably it for him. And he wants to help out the younger talent on the way out. So kind of an exclusive, not really. You can kind of tell that, you know, this was probably it for him. But it was cool to kind of hear it from him, to kind of hear him confirm that, um, you know, he's this is probably it from him. He didn't say, like, oh, I got a year left or five years left. That could mean anything. I mean, Shawn Michaels came back for one more run in 2002 and w was back for, like, eight freaking years. So what exactly does that mean? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, really know what he means by that. But, you know, still, he's, he's on his way out. He's in the twilight of his career, essentially. And um, he wants to get back, and that's commendable. So, again, this is where they had the Biggie and Roman stuff about playing football. Who cares? Um, they welcome on Bianca Belair, and she wants to. She talks about how excited she is to be on SmackDown, her win over Zelina Vega, and she wants to create her own legacy. And Booker, I guess Naomi took exception to what he said on this show. I didn't, haven't seen what she said. I mean, what he said about Naomi a couple of months ago, listen, it was incredibly stupid. 
He was like, oh, no one deserves anything. Because that was like the whole Naomi deserves better shit. He's like, oh, you got to earn it. But she has fucking earned it. You know what I mean? Like, it was just a weird thing. I don't really think he got it. And he's stuck by it. So a lot of people don't like Booker T right now. But uh, anyway, so he said here that it's all about changing those levels. And he wants to see that from Bianca Belair. And she outright says, hey, I'm coming for the SmackDown Women's Championship. And that was it from Bianca. A little bit longer than Sasha, but it wasn't too, too long. And it was weird. I realized after Bianca left, it's like, wait, we just got Bianca and Montez on the same show. I don't think Montez said anything. Husband and wife, and they had no interaction at all. Like, what's even the point? You know, I thought that was weird. Maybe they wanted to keep it professional. I'm not really sure. Montez seemed a little off. He wasn't his normal self here on the show. Uh, maybe they did that by design. But either way, maybe he was just nervous. So Booker, uh, Booker T calls out, or rather responds to David Ortiz, who had some trash talk for Booker T recently on some Fox show, and he responds to David. So they welcome on Sasha Banks in the final few minutes of the show. And Booker and Banks get into it real quick. I don't remember them going back and forth on Twitter. I'm like, what did they have a back and forth about? And it, I guess it was, it was about Sasha and Bailey calling themselves the greatest tag team ever. And I think Bailey was like, oh, we're better than the Hardy Boys. We're better than this team. We're better than that team. We're better than Lay Sex Gods, or AEW, blah, blah, blah. I, I, that's what it was, and I remember that. Um, she did say... Or Bailey must have said, we're better than Harlem Heat. And Booker T took exception to that. The guy was getting worked into a shoe, brother. So, or shoot, you know, what, whatever the expression is. So they kind of get into it here, and Sasha kind of shuts him down and is like, oh, are you mad that I'm better than you, Booker? I mean, obviously, I don't think she actually feels that way, but she was pretty intense here. She should, she did not hold back. Definitely did not sound like a babyface thing to say, which goes back to what I was saying in my SmackDown review, but how she really isn't all that likable with this character. And I love the Bailey and Sasha feud, but there's no, I mean, not that there has to be a face heel dynamic, but it's hard to cheer for either one of them when they're both equally unlikable as characters. But anyway, she was like, oh, do you not like me because I'm the greatest of all time or because, you know, uh, I'm better than you and because I've had more success than you or I've made more history than you and all this other shit. She was like, <laughs> she was shutting him the hell down, which was great. So Booker asks her a dumb question. Where do you think you rank among the greatest of all time? Obviously, she says number one. It's Sasha Banks, Sasha Banks, Sasha Banks, and Sasha Banks. And Sasha Banks probably too at number five. That's what she said. I mean, that was a waste of a question because so clearly that, that's what her answer was going to be. And Kayla's like, do you think, despite everything that Bailey's done, her year-long title reign, that you have the advantage walking into, essentially is what she said, walking into the Hell in the Cell structure for the third time? Banks, again, dumb question, of course she does. And she says yes. She lists, uh, she lists off all of her accolades. Five-time Raw Women's Champion. Former NXT Women's Champion. Two-time Women's Tag Team Champion. And the first ever Women's Tag Team Champion. She's ready to become SmackDown Women's Champion on Sunday. And that was it from Sasha. Again, she kind of came off unlikable here. I like the verbiage, but it's like, am I supposed to be cheering for her? Like, that was the question. But anyway, th that I had at the end of this segment. So the, the, the show ended with... Um, the panel giving their predictions for the pay-per-view on Sunday, Booker, Montez, and uh, Kayla. They kind of run through the card. They give their predictions, and that was it. They they came back from commercial, did the predictions, and that was it was over. So I'm, I'm really hoping, and I don't think it will be, um, you know, a regular thing to have the show here on FS1. I think they only did it because SmackDown was on FS1. I'm mean, Hopefully. Um, just because... I, I like the show, but, like, it does not need to be 45 minutes. And even with 45 minutes, they still couldn't find time for, like, a five-minute Sasha Banks appearance. It was, like, a minute or two. And maybe that's exactly all that all, all the time that we needed from Sasha, but it kind of felt a little underwhelming. But anyway, I thought it was a good show. I really liked the Brian appearance. Brian was more off the cuff and, like, wacky last week, um, especially when he, like, <laughs> said something about, like, a flat, being a flat, like, AJ Styles being a flat earther at the end of the show last week. It's just amazing. Um, we didn't get that Brian this week, but he was still great. Heyman was good. A bit more, you know, uh, conversational than he was the last time he was on the show, a couple of weeks or months ago or whatever. And, um, yeah, and then Sasha and Bianca were good too. So I enjoyed the episode, the October 23rd, 2020 edition right now uh, of uh, Talking Smack. You can check it out right now is what I was going to say. On the WWE Network, again, it's not the October 24th edition, rather the October 23rd, uh, 23rd edition from uh, after SmackDown on Friday night. Be sure to like this video, drop a comment, share the video, and subscribe to the channel for more daily content. Hit that little bell button as well to be notified every time a new video goes up. Have a great one, guys. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'm Graham Gius and Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road.